Hello, today it's Jo from Minerva and we are going to do a sew along of the Closet Core Indie Pattern for the LED wrap dress. The wrap dress um, is quite casual, it has short sleeves or longer sleeves, um, it has short length or a longer length with a slight curve on the hem and it can also have pockets. Today I'm using one of our kits that are already pre-made up for this pattern and in the kit comes a uh, gutterman thread to match the fabric, uh, a sewing machine needle, this is a 130 needle for going through really lightweight fabrics because today I'm using a crepe and crepe can be really really troublesome if you have the wrong needle in your sewing machine so it's great that when you get the kit you can get sewing straight away without any problems. And the fabric I'm using today, I've already cut it out, so I've just got this little piece left to show you, is a polyester crepe. And you can see me through it, so you can see it's going to be a spring-summer make. Or you might decide that you want to do double the fabric for the bodice, in which case you'd need some more fabric. Because if it was doubled, then you can't see me through it. It's got a black background and lots and lots of little um, jelly tops on it. Which I think is good because it means you've got a bit of option with shoes and what jewellery you wear with it and things that you wear with it. It's really, really light and it makes a great dress for taking on holiday because you can fold it up and put it in your suitcase and it doesn't crease very much. So that's a good feature of this fabric. The size range on this pattern is 31 inch bust to a 46 inch bust and it is a US pattern so that goes from sizes 0 to 20 but you're always best to measure your um, body measurements against the pattern measurements when you're using an indie pattern because they tend to use, um, it depends which country the designer comes from. This is the schematic at the back so you can see you can mix and match you could have the longer sleeves on the shorter body or the shorter sleeves on the longer body there's some room for you to customize the dress that you would like closet core are renowned for their timeless design so if you buy a pattern from them through minerva then you will have a pattern that lasts a long long time the, the fashion lines of it make it a pattern that um, doesn't really go out of fashion and they're also renowned for their instruction booklets. Inside the pattern you get a tissue paper piece and you also get a really really good um, instruction booklet. It's got every stage running through it and detailed instructions. So if you're a beginner looking to move on and upskill a little bit these patterns are really great from the instruction point of view. First thing to do is to measure yourself and decide which pattern pieces you're going to be using. Uh, cut out the paper pieces and then it's time to cut out. It is important to look at the pattern instructions with this um, pattern because it is cut with the fabric flat so not with the fabric folded in half. If you get this crepe fabric and fold it in half you will find that the skirt pieces won't fit on it. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of that now on the table in a sort of mini version, a modelled version, because if you start cutting the fabric before you cut your skirt pieces, you'll end up with not enough fabric in the kit. So let me show you what I mean. The fabric is 57 inches wide, which you think is quite a good width for a fabric. So this is a sort of mini version of my piece of fabric. So I folded it selvage to selvage. Um, and I would put all my um, body pieces on there. But when I come to put the skirt piece on, the skirt piece, because of the shape of it, is wider than the fabric. So then I can't cut out two, uh, two front skirt pieces there. So what you need to do is not do to rush into what you normally do. You need to cut this fabric flat. So you follow the cutting instructions on the pattern and you would cut out one of your skirt pieces but then you need to make sure because you're cutting it on the flat you need to make sure that you mirror your paper pieces and flip them over because if it was folded in half 
they would automatically have an opposite of each other. So you have to make sure that you get a right skirt front and then flip and then get a left skirt front. And that's the same for the front bodice because you need um, a left front and a right front. So cutting out just take a little bit longer with this, but do be careful because you'll be surprised when you try to fit your skirt piece on and it doesn't fit. In the booklet, it shows you how to have the fabric with the selvage on one side and the selvage on the other, implying that it's out flat. And then it's showing you um, the grey ones are a mirror version and the white ones are face up. So you've just got to follow the cutting instructions and not perhaps just steaming like you normally do. Before you remove the pattern pieces from your cutout pieces, there are quite a few markings to work on because the dress has some pleats at the front under the bust and it has some uh, dark pleats in the back. So you need to make sure that you're marking all of these. Uh, this pen works very well because if you use chalk, because the crepe is quite thin, it sort of drags it along. So I'm going to carry on working my way through here. I like to put little holes in, put a dot and a dot, and then I can join them up with a ruler at the end. There are all the notches which you need to clip out or however you mark notches. So now I will join those lines up with those dots. There's some markings here for the centre front. There's a dust a bust apex, but that's just for your fittings. If you want to make a twirl first, that might be useful. But obviously with a um, wrap dress, you've got an element of fitting when you're wearing it. There are notches here under the arms, the shoulder notch. And here, look, there's a little snip there. Oh, I've done the shoulder notch there and a side one to help put your item together. On the back, you're asked to mark the um, back pleats with little snips. So I've done that. And there's also notches to mark on there. So make sure before you remove the pattern pieces, you signal to yourself all of the cutting lines that you will need to help you sew it together. Another part of the cutting out process is to add interfacing to the neck pieces. Now, with a very movable fabric like crepe, trying to get your um, interfacing pieces ironed onto your um, pattern pieces is quite tricky. So if you would, could cut that easily out of interfacing, but once you come to try and iron it on, it's quite tricky. So a good trick for putting interfacing onto um, viscose or crepe or movable slippy fabric is to cut out your interfacing. Don't cut your fabric yet. Place it onto your, place the interfacing onto your fabric, cover with a press cloth and then iron and then cut it out because it will already be stuck down then and that's a really quick way of not having to chase the fabric and the interfacing around trying to get them to fit together it's particularly useful on a neck one it's not so bad on the waistband ones because they're squares but um, I did do that technique all the way through because I need to interface the neck the waist pieces and the front uh, wrap neck and I didn't want that to be wrong because that would pull the front out of shape so your final part of cutting out is cutting out and interfacing the first instructions in the pattern are to stay stitch and there's quite a lot of stay stitching because we want that front edge of the wrap dress not to ripple or go out of shape and that's what stay stitching does and skip this stage at your peril with this fabric because it is so drapey that um, you want to make sure that it holds its line in the places where it's supposed to. So especially with a wrap dress, you need to make sure that your stay stitching is really accurate. 
Slow stitching is just a line of stitching through just the single layer and that stops the cut edge of the fabric allowing the weave to open up. So if you put a straight line of stitching through a single layer, it holds all the uh, weave and construction of the fabric steady. I'm going to do that. There's quite a lot to do. There's the skirt pieces, the front body piece, the neck piece and around the arms. So the first stage is to stay stitch. There are a few things I'm finding useful for doing um, this stay stitching on a lightweight fabric, which is um, to put myself a little piece of washi tape at the half inch because I'm stay stitching half an inch from the raw edge. So that's helping me there. I have got a magnet seam guide, but that's sort of pushing the fabric a little bit. I just needed something flat. I've put the extension table on my sewing machine. If you've got one, it's just giving the fabric a little bit more stability and support so it's not flopping and pulling away. And I've also turned the speed down of my machine. If you can do that, that's quite helpful because then you can get a medium speed and keep the fabric lining up with the washi tape. So happy stay stitching, there's quite a bit to do. Okay, it's time to assemble the back panels. The first thing to do is to look along your waist seam and you should have some little notches and you're going to bring you're going to make two little pleats here so you're going to bring together two of the notches and i'm going to pin them because it helps me especially in this fabric it's a bit bouncy and then i'm going to fold them towards the side seam so i'm going to make two bring together the two notches however you mark the notches I'm not going to sew those. I'm going to fold them over towards the side. So the, the pleats are going over towards the side seam. I'm going to press that and then I'm going to baste along the bottom. You can either do it on your sewing machine within the seam allowance or do some big bouncy uh, hand tacks. Because this fabric is very movable, I'm actually going to hand baste those down and I'm going to baste them a bit higher up not just across the bottom because if I do it across the bottom they might sort of open out a little bit where I might catch them in the wrong place so I'm going to keep those very very flat. make the pleats on the front you're going to look at these markings that I made I made these with the um, air erasable pen so I'm going to I've notched the bottoms as well so I'm going to bring together the notches and pin them this is a different sort of pleat to the one that you did on the back because you're going to sew this one with the machine and you're going to bring together the two dots at the end it's not a completely square pleat and then you're going to sew along the line for back tacking at the beginning and at the end so you'll get three straight lines in the front and you do the same on the other side and it looks like this when you're finished so you have three straight lines and then you get these pleats and then from the right side they're called release pleats so you can see then it's instead of having bust darts because then you get that space for a bust apex there are a couple of things you can do to secure the um, underarm seam so you can pin it and sew it and then uh, you'll have your seam line along here and you can just clip into that curve so that you get a nice um, shape and it doesn't pull from the outside but then because you'll have clipped quite close to the seam you will have weakened that area so then you can 
stitch over the top a little bit more or you can um, finish the seam, sew the seam and then you can um, and then you can trim it out to quarter of an inch and then from the right side top stitch it so that you get an extra layer of strength on that underarm curve. The next part of the bodice construction is to put together all of the facing pieces so that you get one full facing unit that goes around the back of the neck and across um, each front piece and that will stabilise the bodice because at the moment the bodice is quite fluid but once we've put the um, inter uh, interfaced pieces around it will stiffen up a bit. There's interfacing in the kit and it's a very lightweight one that doesn't um, spoil the fluidity of the actual fabric. Once you've made the facing unit, so it's got uh, the back neck here and the pieces that go along the front, you're going to finish the edges. There are some good instructions giving you some different options for finishing depending on if you've got an overlocker or not. I also like to use the um, Kylie and the Machine labels. This one says you can't buy this and I've just put that um, 13 millimeters from the edge so that when I attach the main back piece then I will cover that over and then I'll have my label nicely in the back seam. And so now it's time to use all the notches on here and on the body piece to put the two together. Okay, it's all pinned. I have just moved my pins to the wrong side of the bodice actually because I want to use my stay stitching line as a guide because that was 13 mil from the edge and now I'm going to do my seam line just inside that so that that ends up in the seam allowance. So I can use that as my 16 mil guide now. I'm going to change the um, guide on my machine, the tape guide, so that when I run along there I come just this side of the stay stitching line. To get a lovely finish on your front wrap, you need to clip the seams just around the shoulders and the back neck. And anywhere there's a slight curve, just gives it a little bit of ease. And then we're going to understitch it. If you've not understitched before, you're going to sew from the right, you're going to keep the seam allowance facing you, bring the facing towards you, and then sew on the facing. So the facing and the seam allowance are all pushed away and you're going to sew as close as you can get to that seam allowance and that will help the front wrap section fold over you do it a lot on collars and um, front sections if you're getting a bit of bulk around here around the shoulders you can trim out some of that 
because the fabric is so delicate you don't want a big chunky piece on the shoulder so there you will have a smooth shoulder seam so understitch the facing you can also see where I have the label that I put in and that's just going to be top stitched down as well the final part of the bodice construction is to just secure the shoulder facing in place you can do that with a little hand stitch if you prefer if you're not so confident in doing a stitch in the ditch so I'm going to stitch in the ditch so I've lined up the shoulder seam with the shoulder seam of the facing and I'm going to sew inside and as close to that seam allowance as I can to the point where it's invisible right in the crevice of the shoulder seam So you shouldn't be able to see it, but it's stopping that whole facing flapping out because now that facing is attached to the shoulder. Okay, just a little revisit because I went over to the ironing board to try and iron a 6 mil um, hem and then turn it over to 1 centimetre. And I really struggled to get a 6 mil hem there without it bouncing out. So I used some spray starch. So I shook it, sprayed it on, and then when I ironed it, this has just got a little bit of stiffness now along this edge, which means I'm able to manipulate it a little bit more and be more accurate because now I'm folding over one centimetre and, and it's staying really nice and firm but it hasn't spoiled the fabric. It's just given me a little bit of extra handling when I'm trying to fold under a very small six mil hem on quite a bouncy polyester fabric. So there's a little tip for you. Yeah, I'm super pleased with that. I've got a really nice front edge without a ripple in it at all. It's a little bit, you can feel that there's the starch in it, but it's just holding that front edge so that it won't curl out. That's definitely a good way to treat this polyester crepe on that finished edge. Okay, it's time to do the other front piece. And then I'm going to join all pieces of the skirt together to make one big wrapped skirt piece. Once you've got the skirt into the two back pieces and the side panels, um, then you need to start the next phase, which is to make the belt. So the belt comes in two pieces and you're going to sew all the way around using the right seam allowance so that you get a neat and even point on the end of your belt. If you've got a turning tool set, um, it makes for very fast turning of the belt loops. So you put the large tube into your belt all the way to the end. And because the crepe is slippy, and the plastic is slippy you drop it down to the end and then you use the stick to poke the fabric through and, and it should keep moving along all the way to the end and then the fabric will slide out like this and then you've got the stick left in the end so you can use that to poke while it's in there at that end 
There we go. And take the stick out. That's how you make a belt loop and turn it quickly with a prim turning tool. Okay, we've made the top, we've made the bottom. It's now time to work on the waistband. And this is interfaced. The interfaced one is the one that's going to be on the outside and the non-interfaced one is going to be on the inside. You're going to make sure, I've marked it with a pin to remind me, on one side, follow the pattern. Um, it does tell you on your body whether it's the right or the left side. Um, you're going to sew across the end in the seam allowance but with a basting stitch and on the other end you're going to sew with a normal stitch because that end when you've constructed the dress we're going to um, cut that end open so that the tie can come through a hole in the side so one side is stitched and one side is basted follow the instructions for the which side it is it's difficult because i'm videoing uh, on selfie so if i tell you and then hold it up to you it won't look right so make sure that you follow the pattern. It does say um, the word used is how it is worn on the body. So if it says do it on the right side, it's on the right side of your body. You attach the waistband onto the dress in stages. So first of all, we're going to put the outer onto the dress. So I've pinned the um, outer waistband, that's the one with the interfacing, I've pinned it all along the dress. I've matched the side seam with the side of the waistband. I've kept that seam together and my right hand one open so that I can make that split later. And you need to make sure, it sort of feels strange, but you need to make sure that the end of the waistband hangs over the edge of the neck crossover by 1.5 centimeters because that's going to be your seam allowance to attach it so don't match that up with the end of there you'll be short and that's mentioned in the pattern so now we're going to baste that on I'm going to machine baste it on and then you put each part of the waistband and the straps together one item at a time once that's machine tacked in place or you can hand tack it you're now going to put the waist, other waistband facing with the right side of the fabric against the wrong side of the dress. So you've sort of got a sandwich. You've got a waistband and a waistband and the filling inside your sandwich is the bodice. I actually decided in the end to um, interface the other side of the waistband as well because it was such a lovely light interfacing. It was giving it... Um, really nice handling for me so I've decided to do that it depends what fabric you've got if you've got a really lightweight crepe like we're using today it does help with handling if you've got a thicker fabric a viscose or something a bit thicker then you might not need to do it so what we're going to do is pin that on and then stitch through all of the layers along that waistline this time we're going to use a um 16 millimeter seam allowance because when I basted that I did that within the seam allowance so my next row of stitching will be below. The next stage attaches the bodice to the skirt so with right sides together that's the right side of the top and the right side of the skirt with those touching you're going to attach the skirt to the bottom of the outer waistband. So I'll show you what I mean. So there's the bodice, there's the outer waistband and then the skirt goes on the bottom. On the inside you'll still have your flappy facing to deal with in a moment. You will also have that little bit of um, waistband still sticking out so even when you attach your skirt you're going to be matching that there and still having this 1.5 seam allowance on the end. So the easiest way to sort of handle it is to do the side seam and the end and then pin in between. Then the next side seam, pin the centre, then pin in between. 
and then pin the end and the side seam and pin in between so you can sort of make sure that you're easing in all of the fabric and that all the seams match up once you've got this all the parts attached all you've got left is to put the waist ties on and that's quite a precise um, pinning action so you're going to put the waist tie on the right side of the waistband and if you've used the correct seam allowances which was one centimeter when you sewed the waist tie and the 16 mil when you sewed the waistband on it should fit exactly on there and you're going to match the raw edges just in case you're wondering how far to put that waistband on that waist tie on so the waist tie fits exactly on the end and you're going to baste not through the facing keep the facing free and we're just going to baste across the end of here we're going to do the same on the other end and then we can move on to the next and last stage we've got the waist we've got the waist tie basted on and now before we do the final sew of the waistband we need to press down six mil and this one you shouldn't need the starch for because you've got into well um, I put interfacing on this one but if you didn't interface it you might want to starch it just to get an accurate six mil there so that when we come to fold everything down it all fits in place so you need six mil here and that should make sure that all the layers fit together and when you've sewn across the end you can trim off the leftovers and then it will look like this so we'll have everything all lined up have the, this is the front edge this is the waistband this is the tie and this is your hemmed front edge and it should all look really neat like this <clears throat> before we can try the dress on we just need to make that a split and that's way back when we joined the um, waistband pieces together <clears throat> we made sure that one of them was basted and not sewn and then we can split that open and then use a bit of hand stitching to stitch the two layers together so we're going to stitch I'm just going to snip that. I've got my seam allowance just there. <clears throat> so we're going to stitch the front, the outer and the facing together. So we've split the basting on the front and we've split the basting on the back. And now we're just going to secure it with some hand stitching. And just secure the top so it doesn't run open anymore and then the waist tie the inside the waist tie that runs on the inside of your body will go through this hole now that we've made and the hole won't run because we've just sewn the two layers together To secure the waistband facing, you now um, turn the facing over and pin it to the bottom of the waistband. So you'll have your tie coming out of the side. It should be all nice and even there where you've trimmed it out. So you can see here is the waistband loose. So it's going to come over the top and pin in place. And now we're going to hand slip stitch that down so that everything is 
securely enclosed. Okay, so here's the dress finished. Um, I hung it up for 24 hours just to let the hem drop a little bit. With a lightweight crepe, it's a good idea, especially when it's cut on the bias, just to let it hang for a little while in case you get um, the bits on the bias drop down. Um, you can see some of the features a little bit more now. The waist tie is quite long, so it can go all the way around the back. You've got those um, pleats in the back that release and give it that blouse finish. I kept those tacked right till the very end so that they held their shape. The sleeves have a little hem that was a fold over six mil, I think. But um, as long as you're not getting any ripples in it, that's great. We top stitched under the arm for strength. And you've got that really neat flat finish on the uh, crossover. And you've got these expanding darts here, which allow for a bust shape. It's a really, really beautiful dress. It looks very sophisticated when you wear it. But I would say you definitely need a fabric with some drape in it. You need to be choosing a polyester, a peach skin, a rayon, a chalet, um, anything else with it, something with tensile in, anything that's got a drape. Because as soon as you make it in cotton, even the lightest cotton, like a cotton lawn, you end up getting a very different silhouette and shape and I don't think it's quite as flattering to add some inches to your arms than it is for them to drape down as beautiful sleeves. So this pattern feels quite complex when you're making it in a crepe but if you hover on any of the items below you will be able to select a different fabric so chalet is going to be a little bit more easy to work with than this crepe. If you want to see the LED dress in action Click on the pattern in the list below and have a look at the different styles that people have made. The long maxi style, there's one with pockets in, there's a longer sleeve which gives a sort of kimono looking sleeve. And you can also see what sorts of fabrics other people have been choosing. If you would like to ask any questions, you can put those in the uh, list below and we can try and answer them for you. And if you want to have a look at any of these um, products that I've used today, you can click on the list. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed finding out how to make the LED dress.